Welcome to the board the meeting of the Park and Recreation uh, for the advisory board of the city of San Angelo. Uh, Concerning public comment, the board takes public comment on all items in a regular agenda, meeting at a time where the item comes for review. Uh, public input on a regular agenda item will be taken at the appropriate discussion. Public input on an item not an agenda or consent agenda may be identified and requested for consideration by the board at this time. The board may request an item to be placed on a future agenda or for a consent agenda item to be moved to the regular agenda for public comment. Do we have uh, any public comment other than, than comment on the agenda itself? No. Okay, then we go for the consent agenda. Uh, consideration of approving the December 13th, 2018 meeting minutes. I think that Carl has some we, mention. Based on the version that we sent you last week. We identified two uh, errors in the minutes, and we've corrected those. It was a misspelling of a name, and the uh, where it talks about the consent agenda of the minutes from the last meeting. We had the incorrect date, so we corrected that. Okay, with these two corrections, you have a motion to approve. Uh, so moved. Second. Thank you. We. Uh, We have a, a motion to all in favor? Say yeah. Aye. Aye. Yes. Any, op any opposed? Okay. So we have a approval. All, in all, all are in favor. Uh, let's go to the regular agenda. Uh, we have uh, changed a little bit the order to help uh, our friends, uh, truck food owners, uh, to not wait for the wonderful discussion on hammock poles. Uh, so we will start with the uh, designation of food truck parking at some parks and recommending any related matters. You probably know that the city council asked us to uh, review that item. As part of the proposed ordinance, which has gone to council in, back, in a meeting back in January and passed the first reading, in this proposed ordinance, which still has a second reading and should go to council for the second reading in February. Part of the ordinance um, talks about allowing food trucks to park in parks. A uh, major consideration currently without this ordinance is that most of our parks are zoned residential, which basically prohibit food trucks from going into those parks, except uh, if there's a special event going on. <clears throat> And so part of this new ordinance does open up that possibility, even though part, the, most of those parks are zoned residential, that the food trucks could come in. But as part of that ordinance, it, um, we have to designate those parks where the food trucks can go. So this is what this item is, is getting us to look at different locations where staff is recommending that the food truck trucks be allowed to go. <coughs> and... This is our list. Some of these are in uh, commercially zoned areas, but we just want to make it clear, uh, even, even those locations that are already legal to do it by ordinance, we want to just reiterate that we are um, recommending that they be allowed to, to operate there. Bart DeWitt Park, and I'll go, I'll go through these each one. And when we sent this out last week, we were actually looking at designating spots in the parking areas at these parks. But since we sent this out, I want to back off on that a little bit. Our recommendation is going to be to allow the food trucks to operate in the public parking areas of these parks. So when you see an area arrow, that's where we were thinking about where we might designate that. I think it'll be easier for staff. We won't have to stencil or sign those parking areas. Uh, somebody else may park there or when the food truck shows up they won't have a place to park it makes it more flexible I had some concerns about keeping the food trucks away farther away from houses which doesn't apply in most cases um, so I, we were trying to get too smart we want to open it back up and be more flexible about it so producers park is a community park on the northeast side of town we think that's a, a good place to have 
uh, food trucks. Kirby Community Park on the northwest side of town. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Park. It's technically it's a neighborhood park, but it's it's surrounded by commercial areas. Veterans Memorial Drive, the the parking area by the golf course. Kids Kingdom Park, technically Santa Fe East. Very popular park. The downtown skate park. Mark DeWitt Park, um, more commonly known as the Neffs area. And I do need to note that this, this is only the, the public parking at that park. The rest of the parking is private parking. Old Town, the parking lot behind Old Town. Um, the parking lot at the farmer's market. I do want to point out, I don't recommend parking at these parking spots because of the, uh, the proximity of the Los Panchitos restaurant. Glenmore Park off Paint Rock Road. Jaime Padron Memorial Park on the south side. There's this parking lot, this parking lot here, or parking area. The public parking areas at the Red Arroyo, one by the dog park, one off Sol Ross. And then I think this is the last one, Unidad Park. These two parking areas. Yes, those are our recommended locations. And uh, from what I understand from an email today, we do need to get a recommendation from the board on this. And this list will, will go to city council for confirmation. Do we have any questions of the board members first? Yeah, will there be a limit on those uh, parking spots? Or will you have first come, first serve, or like for three spots or something? How many, how many spots will you I have? I think left? typically they use, need to use two spaces, one for the parking and then one for public access. But we have some food truck vendors here that might better answer that question. I'm glad you're not limiting them to a certain spot because depending on the function it might make a difference where they park exactly. and I know food truck festivals are becoming quite popular I've been to a couple and uh, there were lots of fun and that way you could actually have maybe one of those once in a while and not be breaking any ordinance yeah and we still would have special events and you, um, I believe the ordinance would restrict food truck vendors from being at these parking areas for four hours but if it's a special event, an approved special event, you, you could stay longer for the entirety of the, the event. But we see this as a good thing. Can you clarify what special event is? A special event. A special is that a private party? Is it a public oh, party? What? Uh, <clears throat> our special event policy, uh, it's three criteria. It has to be on public property, which is our city properties. 50 or more people and the event must be open to the public. Those are the three criteria. And to be approved, you submit an application. Uh, there's an application fee and a deposit. Um, it gets reviewed and then eventually approved. Insurance is required. And we, we, we look at where, what activities they're doing, where they intend on setting up. OK. Carl, what if there's a special event at a different park that's not listed and you put that in the approval, Is that can that also go through and they list that they want a food truck? If it's part of a special event, it's special events have a different ordinance. And so you, you can advertise, you can sell products, it, it, you can sell food through food trucks as long as it's part of that special event. Okay, so they're not necessarily limited to just these parks if it's done in conjunction with submitting a special event application. That's correct. Okay. Any other question on the board side? Okay, uh, I would love to the, hear to the, the food truckers if they have any, uh, food, uh, excuse me, yeah, food truck <laughs> owners, 
if they have any questions or any comment. Uh, I should remind you that you cannot ask questions to Carl directly. You need to address the board. <laughs> and please state your name. My name is Carlos Rodriguez. I own uh, Cone Ice of San Angelo here. Um, we are uh, looking at these parks here. Some of them aren't parks that we frequent anyway, unless there is an event there, like Neff's Park, you know, uh, there's a river fest there, and um, we pay a vendor's fee to attend that event. Uh, but some of the other ones we do frequent quite a bit. Um, and in, in my case, and, and some other shaved ice trucks, we're not a, your typical food truck. We're not selling tacos or hot food that way. Uh, we're more your ice cream truck type vendor, where we, we pull up and we're there just enough time to serve everybody and then we're off to the next park and we kind of rotate through parks. Um, and, and you know, the other shaved ice trucks do the same thing. We kind of rotate all, th all through the summer through all the parks and stuff. So we're not there for, a, you know, for four hours or anything like that, maybe, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the most. So, um, so specifically, the one that kind of concerns me is uh, Kids Kingdom. Um, I don't know if we can bring back the picture of that. That's the yeah. spot. It's anywhere in that park area. Right. Theory. Well, that that where you have the arrow now is is the loading. And unloading of buses, is that correct? That's typically where we park now, and that and that works fine because if we would have to go to the the parking lot, you're on the opposite side of the park, and those kids are not going to walk all the way over there for a shaved ice. But you know, we we come right down this road here, and with our music going and our lights going, and we catch all the kids and they kind of run over to they kind of know where we park these days. But that's that's the only concern that I have right there is. Just being able to continue to park there for those 10, 15 minutes that we do that. But other than that, I don't see any problem with uh, uh, the other parks where we're parking now. Um, there, are, there is another uh, shaved ice vendor here. I don't know if she has anything differently. Um, but, uh, I don't anyway, see in your case, you don't have a problem. We don't have Good. a problem. You know, it... Um, the, in our new ordinances that were proposed, uh, those were, um, were putting restrictions on us because they didn't want us within 100 feet of a house, and we certainly do neighborhoods like your traditional ice cream truck does, and we do birthday parties and stuff at home, and, um, and certainly we work with schools a lot as well, so those were the two concerns we had with, those, with that ordinance that was proposed. Well, thank you. Uh, do we have any other comment or worries from the public side? My name is Ida Hicks, and I'm with Below Zero Shave Dice. That's my business. I just wanted to agree with Carlos. I agree with everything that he said. The only time that we are there longer than 15 or 20 minutes is if we were hired for a birthday party, and they want us there a little bit longer, you know. But everything else is... I'm in agreement. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. We appreciate. Any other comment, worries concerning this park's designation and their uh, the way that I think Carl presented it is that you can go in any uh, parts of these uh, public uh, parking spots and there shouldn't be any restrictions. So uh, that said, uh, we'd like the, somebody to propose a motion to approve the list of parking lots in public parks that we were presented by the staff. We have a motion. I'll move to, uh, Thank you, Steve. Second? I'll second that. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you for contribution of the public. 
The next item uh, is uh, the placement of hammock poles at a few parks and recommended uh, in related matters. So uh, I know it's a pet pee of uh, Carl, so I'm sure you will be very enthusiastic about that proposition. <laughs> The, the last couple of years, <clears throat> I've noticed high school students, some high school students and some college students tying on to a tr trees in different parks and setting up a hammock. I've noticed this particularly at Santa Rita Park, Angel State University. I've noticed it at other universities, such as in Abilene. Uh, technically, you can't tie anything by ordinance to a tree. Uh, but I think it's a cool idea to let the young folks set up a hammock and chill out in the park. So I thought about the idea of kind of accommodating that um, activity by putting up some posts. And after Googling this and searching this, we realized that other places have done this. And so um, we put out a call of, for interest to the public to see if folks would be interested in this. And if so, where would they suggest that we put some hammock posts? And so we got the results of that last uh, back in December uh, and these are the results Glenmore Park was the number one <clears throat> Unidad Park number two and then Brentwood Park was number three and looking at the different parks and this this is what it basically looks like I think our post would be a little bit higher it's a set of four posts on the poster uh, soft you know rounded eye bolts where you basically tie on or clamp on your hammock. Uh, the hammock has a rope so you can adjust the length and the height based on the rope. And you can set up your hammock and, and relax. At Unidad Park, we're looking at two different locations. Uh, our recommendation is we start here, which is on the east side. If it works out, we could add another set on that side. Each set of these posts with the eye bolts and the concrete, cost about $150 each set, so it's relatively inexpensive. At Glenmore Park, we're looking at this over here by this set of trees. And at Brentwood, we're, we're still in the process of renovating that park, so we're not going to put, the, if this is approved, we're not going to put the post out yet until the end of that renovation project, but we're looking at either one of these two locations, which is kind of in the center of the park and it's on the, the east end of the, the most popular section by the tennis courts. And so we just need some input, some feedback and a recommendation. Are you choosing shady areas? Yes, if you notice that- Most of them are- Although these pictures were taken in December, there's no yeah, foliage, tell, huh? <laughs> good time to take aerial photos because there's no leaves. They are situated under trees. And all you're providing are the poles. Just the People poles. would have to bring their own hammock. Bring hammocks. their own hammock. <clears throat> and if we could do this probationary for years to see how it works. If there's any problems, we can revisit it. If there's more interest in adding more sets, we could look at doing that later. Wooden, wooden posts. Should they be treated? Parks manager. That was the what we see most online, but I'm looking into doing steel posts filled with cement with a welded on top and welded on brackets. It'll cost a little bit more, but it'll be a lot better maintenance and a lot more long-term. We may put in wood to see how it's accepted at first, but that's our, our goal is to get something more durable like that. These poles are they're going to be hard to mow around, are they not? Harder than anything else. That's always a, a concern. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, mowing around them so uh, and trimming, there, it, it means extra time. Uh, not as much. When we set the post, we'll pour a, a footing for it, obviously, but we'll have that exposed at the top about six inches away from the post so the mower doesn't have to get right up to it. And if, if we don't get any runners, then we'll have to be weeding it every time. Okay. All right. 
Other questions or concern? Well, I have, have a little concern. Uh, I just want to make sure that these things are not designated as hazardous. If they are not, evidently it's a good thing. Uh, pools are hazardous, but you know we have people to watch the kids. Uh, swings are hazardous. And there's nobody to watch them but the parents, so it probably can apply in the same way. But I want to make sure that the uh, the city uh, legal team confirmed that this is not a hazardous situation. That's all. I know. I know. Well, I, I have. <clears throat> I have posed the question to the city attorney, and if you want to recommend this, you could recommend it conditionally based on her opinion. Uh, just knowing that the Texas, Texas recreational use statutes, basically the, any visitor to a park is treated legally as a trespasser as long as we, <clears throat> as long as we address any known hazards, such as a hole or broken glass or some sharp object, if we know of a hazard, we either have to remove it or mitigate it. Uh, prevent yeah, you notice as well actions. that these, the, the picture we had, it's, they are, it's pretty low. And, and you said we, we may raise that. I, I wonder if it's not low because that's a way to limit the, the accidents. Falling off. Uh, and again, you, you would, the hammock won't be there unless somebody brings a hammock. <clears throat> And, and a lot less liability because they have to provide their own hammock. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. Uh, anyway, no, um, no signage is necessary. You don't think? What? <laughs> Use at your own risk. <laughs> we could post something on the post, but uh, well, anyway, I, I think that uh, we can make a recommendation uh, to accept uh, the proposal, the proposition made by the staff to install in tree parks. Uh, these uh, hammock poles, uh, subject to the final approval of the legal staff of the city. Yes, sir. Uh, if we if we try this, uh, how long would we? How long would? It, uh, or maybe we start out with one and say, uh, you know, people use it fine. Let's do it. And if people don't, then uh, then pull it up. Uh, I say give it at I least. I mean, we need a evaluation a time. I say give it at least a year, and I'd like to do at least two sets, one set at Unidad and one set at Glenmore. Okay. <clears throat> and we can make note of revisiting this within a year. Oh, well, I'd give it two years. I, I don't two know. years I'm, is fine. But, I mean, uh, just to have a pole uh, out there that they have to mow around and, uh, or, you know, people could run into, uh, you know, not playing, playing football and not paying attention, you know, or something. Right. We definitely can revisit this. I mean, it's like we had a croquet set at one of our parks. It used to be used, and then for years it wasn't used. And so <clears throat> we eventually took it away because it wasn't being used. So that's that's reasonable. I think, I think these kind of things need to be evaluated. Yes. I agree. The situation is that these poles will be under the trees, Steve. And I personally don't think that not too many people would play football under the trees. But... <laughs> You know, soccer. I mean, you, I mean, going running. Uh, it could be any number of things, but kids get crazy. I kind of think the point is, um, hammocks are becoming a popular thing, and and isn't that your point too, Carl? That you're, yes, thank you're you. starting <laughs> to see it in parks in other cities, our size and larger. Um, having traveled a lot, I see. I, I've seen those, and I thought, wow, that's a great idea. Never thought about bringing it home, so I'm glad to see it. And I think that's and I'm, started. I'm, I commend you for um, staying, trying to stay with the times because it's the young people that we'd like to get out in parks too. And uh, so I'm glad to, that there are obviously our leaders of tomorrow, and those are the ones that are wanting to use it right now the high school students and the college students. So we ought to pay attention. That's that's why I haven't had an issue with Pokemon Go either because I want <laughs> I want folks to c come use the parks. Mm. The question then become one or two. Uh, firstly, I would favor to start with two to have more impact. Uh, so, do we have a motion for accepting the recommendation made for two po two sets of poles for hammocks in two uh, parks that were m mentioned? Yes, I, I motion. Do you have a second? 
I'll second it. Thank you. Uh, only in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have the capital improvement plan projects for 2019-2024. What uh, do you need here? First, just oh. a, a quick recap of what we have in the current capital improvement plan, <clears throat> which, which can be found on the city's website. The current 2018-23 plan, um, it's separated into basically two sections. Projects we anticipate uh, addressing in the next five years, and then future projects. I won't read this, but this is what we currently have for our five-year period projects. These are our list of future projects. And again, the CIP, it, it has funding information, but CIP isn't, isn't the vehicle to fund items. It's just to identify the projects. <coughs> so for this coming plan, the 2019 to 2024 plan, these are the changes we have. And I have one addition um, since we submitted this presentation to the board and I get, put that sheet um, at your sitting place for the splash pad. So the new, the new plan, my understanding from an email Tuesday of this week <clears throat> is that it will be reorganized a little bit differently. It will basically have, I think, four sections. The first section is all the projects that are currently ongoing. As the plan is adopted, it's all the projects that are on, ongoing. The next section will be project, projects that are upcoming within the next five years. The third section will be projects that are strictly maintenance related. Basically, if you're replacing a roof or you're replacing air conditioning, something to keep that facility uh, going as is intended. And then the fourth section is the future projects, the, the projects that are conceptualized we intend to address in the future. So I had hoped to be able to report the, the Texas Bank Sports Complex and the Station 618 parking lot completed and removed from the 2019-24 plan, but I think they'll still be in there and they'll be shown as ongoing projects. But by that time the plan is adopted, uh, the, the restroom f project should be complete and the parking lot project should be nearing completion. So those, my understanding, those two projects will be listed as uh, under ongoing. <clears throat> the other things that we're recommending doing for the plan, um, moved from the five-year section to the future section, the Civic League Park Improvements, which is the Botanical Gardens, and the Glenmore and MLK restrooms. Primarily, that decision is based on uh, the probability of getting those projects funded. I think it's becoming less likely to get funding within the next five years for those projects. That's the reason. But even though the project is, if we move it to the future list, even though it's in the future list, if we do get funding, it could, it could be uh, tackled doesn't keep it from being addressed. And then we've added uh, to the five-year section, the ongoing, um, the upcoming section, the Lake Nasworthy improvements. And once, once we know that list, define that list, uh, we'll show the details of that. And then the Kids Kingdom playground replacement, which you may not have heard us talk about yet, um, but it's the playground was put in in 2003. It's over 15 years now old and it's nearing the end of its life. And we need to start looking in the next few years about replacing that. <clears throat> we, keep it, we keep it up as well as we can, but it, it's nearing its end of its life. And we, our hope is that we can get folks interested in doing another um, community project associated with that. And then added to the future list would be the Twin Mountain Drive Area Neighborhood Park.
That is, that is what we're proposing as changes and updates to the capital improvement plan. So basically, you take few projects out of the five year, and you put few projects in the five year, and you add one to the future. Now three, that the splash pad. We had it. Ah. We had it in <coughs> a couple of years pad. ago. We had it in the five year section. And then I took it out and put it in the future section because I thought the likelihood of its funding was, was becoming less. But now, last in the last week, I've been approached by two separate organizations, one that's uh, will spearhead efforts to, to raise funds through the community and grants to do a splash pad, and then HEB from San Antonio, I'm meeting with them in February. They're interested in helping to fund a splash pad. So the likelihood of funding has, has increased, so that's why I'm recommending it go back to the five-year section. Okay, so now we have the complete picture. So any questions as to these moves? Take out, bring back in, put a new one in. It was very confusing to me. <laughs> confusing? Yeah, this, this all change around because some of these, uh, these like the MLK rest, uh, restrooms have been uh, proven to be very important to some of the members of the uh, of the city council, and uh, I, I don't I don't like uh, moving that around. And and this Twin Mountain Drive area park, I I, I know nothing about it. Uh, you know, the last time we talked, uh, it was never mentioned, but uh, another location was uh, on. Uh, well, in our list of, of future the... projects. I'm going the wrong way again. List of future projects. We identify areas of town that do not have neighborhood park services or community park services. The Twin Mountain Drive neighborhood area is a, a new growing residential area that we have not yet identified as a service hole for parks. And that's why I'm recommending adding it. And it does have... Neighborhood, uh, neighborhood group of that area has uh, approached a city council member as well as staff about the possibility. This was put on by the city council member? Uh, essentially, yes. Okay. All right. We talked about it la last time, I think. Or maybe it's just you and I, but... Yeah, I think we did. We, yeah, the council member basically now has mission to try to find a place for the park. And then we said, well, we need to find out how... In the future, yes. we can finance some of these things. Right. So uh, that's what we talked about last time. It make I mean, it makes sense to add it since it's a new area that's being developed. I, I do agree with the need for the restrooms at Glenmore and MLK, but they have been on the five-year section in excess of five years. There's talk there, about we, funding them, but well, that, they the, don't get funded. The CIP is is, is a wish list. Uh, uh, Essentially, it's on the part. wish list, uh, and uh, and I I understand why Lake Nazareth improvements is moved up because there's money uh, funded to fund them, uh, so I'm, I'm not funding. opposed to that kind of stuff, but we can't even pay our light bill apparently, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we we don't need to be, uh, you know. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, I would like to see a clearer list of what you're talking about. I'm used to the old one, and I guess. <laughs> and, well, the and, and, one, and the funding, where's the funding coming from, that kind of thing. Again, the, this, the CIP plan, it talks about funding, but it doesn't dedicate funding. Right. And my thought on moving things around are based on the likelihood of getting funding. Well, I guess Steve has a point. MLK restrooms could stay in the five years. Which one? Not move the MLK restrooms. Okay. Not to move it out because I think it, there's two reasons for me. The one, the the council, some council members are interested in seeing it happening, and then I don't think we do enough for that part of the city anyway. It seems that we're always looking at other projects. So let's put it in place, but as you see, I propose that our next meeting, 
we talk about financing. We know to, we, we talk about how to finance stuff and what we think can be financing one way or another uh, would be in there. And I think MLK should be, restroom should be something that we need to find you know, a source of funding for. Right. Right. So, well, free money or not free money or one or the other. And I have a question. Once they're put in these different categories, is it not um, possible to bring it back to us in case um, all of a sudden there's some activity on one project and we'd like to move it from the five-year to future category into the added to the yes, five-year. Yes, even if it's in the future so, category. So, I mean, it's not like we can't touch that because it's not, you know, correct. it's not even, set in concrete, which is good. Um, that's correct. And I, I like the idea of having these categories because it does give us a little more um, idea as to, you know, how, how quickly will these things possibly come come to pass and right. um, rather than just a list of the items that are on and those that are not on you know so I, I'm glad to see the the categories really and I'm glad you're adding a, a maintenance one because that's important got to right. take care of what we've got any more concerns from the board members do we have anybody in the public who has any concerns or doesn't seem to be the case so um, I would I would like to to propose that we entertain a motion uh, that would basically to please I guess Steve and, and uh, agree with him to basically put back MLK restroom as the only change to what the the staff proposes. Is that okay with you, uh, Carl? Yes. I can live okay, with that. Thanks. So do you have a motion to approve the list, the changes proposed by the staff, except moving MLK, leaving MLK restrooms in two to five years? Do we have a motion? I move. Steve? I move second. to Second. Thank you, Debbie. All, all in favor? Aye. I got Aye. a question, I guess, oh. before we get too much further down. The King's Kids, King's Playground construction, is that'll be in the same location, or how do you do that? You just tear everything down and rebuild it, or how do you do that? Essentially, yes. So it, the, the playground would be offline for some period. It, it's not to say that a playground could be built somewhere else in the proximity, but without the use of Santa Fe Park at this point, this is Santa Fe East is probably the best location. So with this clarification, do we still have a the motion? Do we still have a second? Yes. yes. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Who's the Okay, thank you. So we have a motion is accepted. Uh, second part of the CIP is the prioritization of unfunded CIP projects. So, Carl, again. In your packet were two attachments, one that shows our list, our ongoing list of unfunded projects, the one that we updated at a meeting about a year ago, and then attached also is staff's recommendation for this year's based on updates. Can you tell us which, which pages is that? Because we have a lot of pages right and we have page 130 and then we, put, oh, we go back to the oh, last three pages, okay. One from last oh, okay. year's dated yeah. February 2nd. 2018, and the one proposed is dated January 14, okay. 2019. Get that. And I can point out what the differences are. If you look at the proposed list, January 14, 2019, we've we've bumped up Lake Nasworthy improvements to high priority. Added new Kids Kingdom playground replacement under high priority. Moderate priority, bumped down Civic League Park Botanical Gardens. 
And then on lower priority, added new Twin Mountain Drive neighborhood park. Those are the only changes in the listing of the projects. I made some changing on, if you notice, Lake Nasworthy. Last year, <clears throat> I had some sub-projects under, under there. I took those out for this year because we still need to finalize what that list is. I do have an updated report from the Lake Nasworthy Homeowner Association um, for three projects that are parks and recreation related that are their three priorities at this point. It's related to this, so. And you want me to tell you what those are? It's up to the chair. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Debbie, just one question. Uh, next next month, we may have an, uh, the answer to the questions that were asked by the committee that we formed. And I was wondering if we could not look at that again at that time. Because this is really dedicated to moving up or down projects in a priority list, which really doesn't mean that much. No, because no. there's no funding. Uh, so if you agree, Debbie, we could move that to next, next month? Just as long okay. as they don't get left off. No, I, th I think that what uh, what, what <laughs> no what Carl did and, and uh, really very rightfully so is the, the improvements on Lake Nathworthy are now a priority, so you're not forgotten. The other thing that uh, we know very well that the mayor has a strong interest in doing it as well. Yeah, we uh, were wait, wanting to wait on the. Um, so we we have sewer. some form of uh, uh, commitment of the two most important parties, which is basically the public. HOA and in the and uh, the city, uh, and then we know the staff is committed as well. So you have the three very important commitment, which is not always the case for the project. So I think we nobody will forget about that. Um, I have more, more, more problems about community recreation center and Santa Fe Park being there still, uh, especially the the Santa Fe Park. We we know we we tried it and we didn't get it. Well, it doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be at Santa Fe Park. This project is near and dear to our hearts. You can make a recommendation to move it down, but staff wants to keep it as a higher priority. The likelihood of its funding, I understand. This, this, this list doesn't necessarily talk about the likelihood of funding. It's, it's what we think are priorities, and you're welcome to make a rec recommendation to change it. This is what our recommendation is. What Steve said earlier uh, is a wish list. It definitely is. So I guess the order of priority doesn't mean much. <laughs> That's just what the staff would like to see happening, predicated on their vision of what the parks should do in the future. Yes. OK. Any other questions? So, Any worries about that list? Okay, well, do we, do we have a motion to approve the list as proposed? I'll make a motion to approve the list as, as stated. Thank you, Debbie. I'll second. Anybody in favor, say hi. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The list is approved as proposed. Thank you, everybody. So the next Item of the agenda is the discussion of an open space master plan for parks and recreation. <clears throat> the, the old one uh, was uh, done in 2012, and it looks like it wouldn't cost anything to the city to finance a, a new one. So, Carl? Well, yes, it won't cost additional budgeted monies. Our proposal to fund it this time <clears throat> would be from departmental savings matched with a grant from the Texas Healthy Communities provided by the San Angel Health Department. Now, when we did this plan in 2012, we did it on the cheap because we hired a, um, a graduate of the same program 
I'm in who was between jobs. She was doing consulting, and so she had low overhead, and she did it for $20,000. That is very cheap uh, for a master plan of this scope and scale. We anticipate the cost being more um, and just from searching online based on what other cities have been paying for similar plans. It's, it's in this range, sixty to seventy, eighty thousand dollars The new thing that with because of the grant, <clears throat> we would have to add the elements um, provided that, that are required by that grant. <clears throat> There's eight initiatives, health initiatives that are under the Texas Healthy Communities Program. Uh, that may, that will affect the cost, but I, I've got to keep it within this cost range. We'll have to negotiate the services within that range. So um, this is really, you could make a recommendation on this, but I'm just kind of updating where you're at, we're at on this. <clears throat> uh, we've already drafted the request for proposal. We can't send it out yet because we haven't secured the funding, but it's ready, it's almost ready to go out. Um, I have to get city council approval to be able to use those departmental savings and move those funds into an account that could fund the plan. And I hope to achieve that um, this next month. And our goal is to start tackling this uh, this spring and summer. And if this moves forward, the board will definitely be a part of this process with public meetings and public hearings. Well, what would be the uh importance of the uh, public outreach in this progr uh, program. Public outreach. Public outreach. How important is it? Oh, it's very important. I mean, uh, th for a couple of reasons. <clears throat> Typically, we do a master plan to help us, two reasons, to help us identify what the public wants us to focus on in terms of facilities and programs, and then two, to be more competitive for state grants, which We've been very successful in getting in the past. Um, we, I refer to this often, especially when if we're developing a new park or um, new programs, we look at what the public has told us in the last plan as to what they want us to focus on. For instance, <clears throat> when we did this one, based on the last one we did before this was 2007, uh, the dog park moved from close to the bottom of the facilities recommended by the public to number two. And that is why we focused on getting the dog park done, <clears throat> thankfully with the help of the Girl Scout who helped raise the funds. So it, it helps direct us a lot in terms of what we focus on. Yeah, I ask a question because um, I would like everybody to know that the mayor says that she has capabilities to organize, to organize that kind of effort to go to the public and uh, get, the, uh, get basically the, the feel for what people desire, uh, which is even a lot less expensive than to go outside. So how do we justify to go outside versus going to some town, uh, town, uh, town halls format? Well, the city is going to help facilitate those public hearings no matter what, but what this also includes is a public survey which we don't have the time to do. And if you look at this document, <laughs> we don't have the time to put this together, honestly. It includes a complete inventory of our programs and facilities, uh, the survey, the results of the surveys, an analysis of the surveys, um, implementation strategies. We could do this, but if we did this, we would be not be doing other work have to hire a staff yes. person full-time for a year. Well, she, she was not talking about the staff of the Parks and Recreation. She says she has a staff that can organize town halls and get people's uh, views on a certain number of subjects. Uh, I don't know who she has, but she has some people. So I, what I would like to make sure of is that when we go in front of the, the council, that we have an answer and say, well, you know, we would love for the city to organize town halls on the subject, but on the other hand, we need a professional to, you know, put all that together. And, and so some kind of collaboration between city and what we want to do. Uh, I think she's very strong on, on that. Uh, remember that she uh, resent the fact that we spend 
large number of dollars to make a survey and uh, on yes and she doesn't like that she hates it and she will use it saying you know we're doing the same thing again so let's let's pull whatever resources we have at the city level to conduct these town halls and she may want to assist she may want to speak to it so i, I think it's a bit more than do that by ourselves that's what i'm saying understood she definitely will be part of this process. So <laughs> let's make sure that she and the resources of the entire city in terms of reaching out to people uh, are involved. And I, I agree, I think that's a great idea, but I think also in, when specialty areas are specialty areas from people that have an education in that field and um, are familiar with, I mean, usually people that do these master plans have an incredible background and experience in that particular field. And they're also, um, they've done them at several other cities, probably similar to our size. I mean, I'm just trying to say it, it's more of a specialty and an educational um, area as far as parks and recreation go. But I like the idea of, of the um, city local neighborhood meetings or whatever to get feedback from the people. but. Again, you, you need that feedback from professionals. The city, uh, it could be as well uh, a, a, any of our elected officials in their own area that would love to have a town hall on the subject, making mm -hmm. sure that they are part of it and they be, they be, of be, it. everybody is included. So all, all I'm, I'm trying to say, because we, I was a little bit uh, frustrated earlier when we tried to make something happen that was big and nice and, and great and didn't happen because we didn't include everybody. So I, I, all, I'm, all I'm saying is let's try to include all the stakeholders, especially the city and the council members. Go ahead, Steve. Carl, uh, does the school, ASU, uh, have any department uh, in their business department? Do they do these kind of things? Uh, not, not exactly, but we can likely tap into some of their resources as we have in the past for different projects. Uh -huh. um, I, I don't think they have they, they probably could do a plan like this but I don't think they have a department where I, we could tap into that they could do it well, they have they that could, business they, school over there that we are part of and they, could, they could likely help us with parts of it okay. so <clears throat> because uh, I feel that you know, these are these are to me this is like, uh, like the mayor it, it's kind of like wasted money but it's uh, we have to have them to get grants. Uh, there's no no way around it. And, and an, an aid, uh, an aged uh, master plan like the one you're you're talking about the in 2012 uh, doesn't do us any good as far as so uh, you know seventy thousand dollars could pay for the uh, toilet in in uh, in uh, MLK uh, you know but we have to use it were required the system is set up that we have to go through these these kind of qualifications to to we can definitely reach out to ASU to work. yeah but thank if, you Steve yeah. I think we can also look at the uh, SL, uh, San Angelo uh, school district and ask them to provide some students to do surveys and stuff like that I mean the more people we have that we be aware of the project and aware of what we do for parks and recreation. I think it'd be great. It's just a, we need to brand a little bit more our parks and our recreation practice. Don't, okay. Don't any do more, this in a bubble is what you're any saying. Any more comment? <laughs> well, I think it was a good, good discussion and uh, I think we'll agree that you initiate the uh, process. Right. Putting all the I'm elements gonna... that we came up with together. <laughs> right. We're not looking. We're not necessarily looking for recommendations here, just some, some input. Okay, thank you everybody. Now, can you update us on the design process for the sculpture gardens? And I want to introduce uh, Al Torres. He's the uh, construction manager for the city. He took David Knapp's place. He's been with the city for a while. He's a licensed architect. He came from, he was head of permit, and here he is. He'll give the presentation on this item. Welcome, Al. Don't be too uh, controversial, please. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, board, uh, board members. Again, as Carl said, my name is Al Torres, um, construction manager for the city, and I'm just going to update you on this project. Uh, the Sunken Garden Park, I, I assume you know the general uh, idea behind the park. We're, we're basically going to try to do some improvements. Uh, we're going to try to improve the um, – renovate the park with new enhancements, uh, try to provide a better connection to the existing river trail, improve the walkways, uh, improve lighting, uh, try to create some park entrances, uh, add some sculpt sculpture plants in the sculpture area, rejuvenate the water feature, uh, do some plantings, parking improvements, and just general park improvements. So what we've done is is we sent out an RFQ, uh, I think April is, is when those were, were opened, that the project itself was awarded officially to MMA Texas Inc. by the City Council on December 11th. Uh, we signed a contract and executed the contract on January 11th, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. The contract is effective for three years. It's not gonna take three years for them, for them to design the project, but we wanted them to be on board or ha have the contract that long because we don't know how long funding will take to, to gather and, and how long the project will take to construct. So we want them on contract to do contract uh, management as well. <clears throat> the general uh, timeline or what we are now is the design team is planning to come down the week of February 11th to start the survey process. They're going to start surveying the land and, and, and what's there. Uh, before then, we have a team that's probably going to meet next week uh, of some of our key players to start talking about uh, the initial proposal that they submitted with their, uh, uh, with their bid and what do we want to see from that bid, what do we want to happen, what do we not need to happen, uh, so we can meet with, be ready to meet with him when he comes on the 11th. Uh, their timeline is roughly, and this is not set in stone, but roughly when once they start surveying, they'll take about four weeks to do surveys, uh, and then another four weeks to do uh, design development or you know uh, preliminary design. They'll give us a chance to review it. And then another four to six weeks to do design development after that. We'll have another chance to review it. And, of course, we'll bring those to you and update you on, on what's happening all, at all of these steps. Uh, and then once we review that and give it a final approval, then they'll start moving, working on construction documents. And that'll be probably another six weeks uh, for construction documents. Um, and that's really all I have at the moment. Uh, I don't have any anything on, on design yet. Uh, but, again, as we have more information, we'll get it to you. Audi. Going backwards. Here we okay. Go. Yeah, I, and I thought about once I saw that you, uh, Carl was showing slides, I thought I should have brought a slide of this. Um, essentially, the clouded in area that you see on here is what they're going to be focused on. The east side of the project we already know that uh, there's there's some ideas we have for, for things on that side as well but we already know that we're not going to have funding to do everything uh, so we're going to pretty much focus on on this area in here uh, as i said this, the main things that we're talking about is is a better connection to the river over here we have the existing river trail and we want to do some kind of a, a grander uh, entryway uh, you know some kind of a, a an entrance marker so people know on the trails that there's you know, draw their attention to here. We have this bridge that goes across the river here, so f focus on that and have, have have something that draws people over here. Um, we were talking about parking, and, and parking is going to be kind of a, a key item on this because we we do want to provide parking. We want to invite people here, but we're also concerned that we don't want to we don't create an ugly parking lot. Right here, as in the face, in the face be, of our park, and does it have to be there? I mean, well, we talked about gosh, it, and you that's know that th that's part of keep San Angelo beautiful. You've that's, that's, that's one of our main thoroughfares going through. Yes, and I'm going to tell you, I don't, I don't like the idea of a parking lot being right there in front. Well, I'd like to stick it in the back corner. And that was what that was that was <laughs> one of my concerns as well uh, when I started looking at this. I mean, think and, about and that. And what I'm what I'm looking at is this corner here. The the issues is. There's an existing historic stone wall, rock wall that goes around oh, the park that's here. True. So um, we're not saying that it can't be done, but MMA has pointed out that to do that, 
it's going to cause some more hurdles that we have to jump with the Texas Historical Look how narrow the entrance is into that parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> Safety concerns there, really. The, the, other, the other issue is this neighborhood here. Uh, you know, we don't want to create a, something, a lot of traffic along this, this neighborhood either. So what we're looking at, what we're looking at, we, and again, mm. this is a process we have to go through. We're looking at maybe an entrance on this side with a parking lot here to try to minimize traffic through this neighborhood and keep it all along here. Um, uh, of course, we have to we have to look and see what's possible with with uh, Texas Historical Commission and what kind of mitigation process we have to go through to to uh, do anything to that rock wall. Um, if we do end up here, MMA has made a good case that we also want to invite people that are go driving up. He said he's when he's out here looking at the site, he sees people driving by very slowly, you know, looking at the sculptures and, and checking out the park. And instead of having to do that, invite them in to drive in and, and, and park. And there are things you can do to parking lots to kind of help screen them and make them nicer than, than just a parking lot. So if we do end up with something here, we want to make sure that it's it's treated um, in, in such a way that it's inviting and not just an ugly parking lot and screened with berms or, or landscaping or whatever you know, so that it's not, it's not an eyesore. Um, the... The water feature itself, again, it was an active water feature at one time, and I think the only issue is that the pump's not working, so it could be that we could... Uh, there is no pump. <laughs> okay, so that that's something that we're, we're going to be working on. Uh, the sculptures themselves, they're going to be create a... a and, and again, we're looking at different options, but they want to create a kind of a separate sculpture area with, with its own set of trails uh, so that... Sculptures can there be some permanent sculptures and some that can be moved around or, or changed. One of the things they've talked about is some kind of an iconic sculpture, which is which is this uh, something that can be seen from from far away that that basically draws people here that they see it from somewhere. Say, hey, let's go see what that is and drive over there and, and attract them to the park. So those are some of the the key things that they've submitted with their design proposal. Uh, the next step again is to sit down and say, okay, these are the you know, again, we're going to prioritize these, see what it costs, see what kind of money we have, um, and then get them working on some drawings. Did I miss anything, Carl? Any questions for Al? Any questions? Well, I do have two. <laughs> Number one, are you designing for cost? Meaning, do you have a budget for construction that you're designing for? We, we do not at the moment. Uh, Carl, do you? So the, the we figured a, a, a rough estimate of, of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars initially, uh, and that's what we based the fee for the designers on. Because typically ten percent is a, a design fee that you pay across the board. So what right now that's what the budget is. Right, not including the art, not including sculptures and, and whatnot. So it includes the parking lot. It should include the parking lot. Yes. <laughs> I have some questions about the parking lot. Okay, where it's located now, and I, I know that you'd like to move it, but that is so far away from, if you want to put in a canoe drop-in, I'm not going to drag my canoe all the way over there. And not to mention the barbecue and the gazebos, I have to drag all my stuff from that parking lot. And well, again, as I, as I said, th that stuff, the, the, the canoe drop-off and the barbecue areas, those don't exist now. Well, no, I understand right. that, it, but that park, but where you were considering it is much better than that. For this, also, this opposed to this, yes, now? for also those reasons because they're connected there. Okay. Well, the and again, and these are all considerations that we're, we're going to talk about yes. with the designer. And well, we're, and, we're and going I to don't talk want you to ourselves. forget those right. because I would yeah, not let them know. All you my don't stuff like it there. <laughs> and, and, that, and that's good to know. Yep. We want to know what like we want to know what you think. We want to know what the public mm. thinks. We want to know, and then you know uh -huh. we, we have some expertise too. So we you know we'll let them know what we think as well. Mm -hmm. But but they have a lot of expertise as well. So we'll listen to their their arguments as well I to see. see. Uh, <laughs> these these are going to be kind of future down the road mm -hmm. as of right now, unless it turns out all this is cheap enough that we think we can afford it. But right, um, the but yes, I, I see what you're saying. I get, I get your point. Who will make the decision at the conceptual level to accept the final concept? Do you have a committee to do that, or 
our committee's staff, if, if the board wants to designate a member or two to help be on that review committee, what we intend to do, I guess, at 30, 60, 90, bring some, at 30% design, 60% design, 90% design, we intend to bring something back to the, the board for review. But you, you know that uh, at 30%, it'd be cast in the stone almost. 30%, I, not necessarily. But yeah, well. if, if, if the board wants a member or two to be more actively engaged as part of the committee. I thought Mr. Taylor was part of this too. Not part of the board. I, yeah, I understand that. So who, are the, who are the members of this committee today? It's me and Al, Mike and Roger, uh, Howard Taylor, Richard Salmon. I believe that's it. Anybody from the board wants to join that uh, distinguished group? I'd volunteer. Okay, Debbie definitely has a strong opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can accept her. Of course. <laughs> Did the gazebo abbey at Dale fall on the wayside, or what happened to the gazebo? It's not conceptual. They were just kind of just trying right. to show us. Yeah. Right, and, and it's, it's certainly not out of the picture, but, I mean, that was on the con early conceptual drawing that was submitted. Um, it's not on this drawing, but, again, it's still on our list, so we'll, we'll still talk about the possibility of a gazebo there. I think originally the gazebo was over here in the picnic area. Still says barbecue and gazebos. Right. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're just not shown specifically. Uh, kind of the roof line. It shows a roof line of three of them. Oh, yeah, I see that there. Mm -hmm. That there were trees. Yeah. Any other concerns other than the parking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it looks like uh, we, we are done. Thank you, Al, for coming. Yes, sir. Great to, to see you again. So, any consideration for future agenda items? Uh, I, I propose that we start to look at potential area of funding, which you have, and, and prioritization and, and funding. We already have the prioritization, well, don't we? The, ne the next step was to identify some of those projects that you want staff to bring back to you to talk about how we strategize to take okay. those projects to the next step. Okay, well that's, yeah, good idea. That's what we wanted. And we want to, make, we want to see if uh, there's a finalization of any uh, report from the water people uh, on Nathworthy, if we can have that also on the, on the agenda, plus the three new projects so we can make a review uh, of the projects that the HOA is kind of uh, prioritizing as well. Maybe a little bit more also to understand how the monies that are in the, um, uh, the fund could be, uh, I guess, freed. <laughs> we have to go through a, a, a city uh, vote or... Right. So okay. it, it takes council approval to move it forward to a city referendum. Could we have a little bit more on the city referendum? I don't think we, I personally don't have an idea of how that, that can be organized. What it takes, time. Right. Okay. okay. Any other item that you guys would like to review? I don't know if it's an item, but you had talked about healthy communities program and that it had certain Things that you had to meet, or criteria that you had to meet, can can I see the criteria? Can you send yes. it to us, or yes. a link, or something? Yes. Because that that may also fall into play with um, like Nasworthy. Uh, citywide. Uh, Brent <laughs> Brent's our staff person for that program. He'll he can forward. It. Okay. Do we have a grant funding person? That works for the city. Yes and no. We don't necessarily have a person that's what they do. Specializes in. But Sandra Villarreal, who is our health department director, she does write most of our grants for us, especially the smaller ones, and she's quite successful. Uh, so she. And her name she, is what again? Sandra Villarreal, and she's also she's the one that's bringing this matching money for the master plan as part of that program. 
she's gotten this money for the rain capture um, system at Kirby Pavilion. Um, she got us money for the demonstration, rainwater capture demonstration at uh, the Bosque. She's gotten us the batting cages for the 29th Street Sports Complex. And do we have a person at the city level that um, goes out into our community to ask for donations to help pay for different projects? You're looking. That would be Carl. You're looking, <laughs> you're looking at us. <laughs> we are it. I mean, even like the bathrooms at MLK, I could see some businesses in that yeah. area maybe wanting that bathroom to be named, you know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Signage it just the, takes. Yeah. yeah, I thought that's what we wanted yeah. to talk next at the next meeting with source of fundings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once mm -hmm. we prioritize that, and and it, it, in fact, we should reverse the whole thing. Wherever they, they are, we think there are funds available, we should match uh, projects with. It's not the project first and the funding second. It's second, funding first, and then match right. the projects that go can go with it. We could do something interesting, I think. Are there any specific projects you want us to bring forward to strategize? No, not at, at that stage. What I'm saying, we, do, we need to look at sources of funding. <coughs> and then we need to see what project could be uh, the source of that funding. Because if you look at <coughs> MLK bathrooms or any bathrooms in the world, uh, naming rights on that is pretty difficult. But you can have a drive like we had for the dog park probably people could subscribe, saying, well, that's important to us. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would like to do, the source of fundings and try to match projects. And we have a list of projects. And some are too big, definitely, to do anything like that. Well, and, and, and getting that out to the public, I think, is real important, you know, in the different forms of whatever, in the newspaper, online. I know we have a city TV right. link. You know, as much as we can... I don't know, you know, getting getting information out to the city about what some upcoming projects are and feedback or if anyone's interested in help funding. I mean, you know, well, can't so, keep it a secret. So I think that's funding. good. we got to be cheerleaders. Yeah. Some funding is very targeted. For instance, the proposal from HEB on the splash pad. Well, if Ms. V Vila Real does... <laughs> Real. Yes, I, I, I will mess up at people's names. Um, if she would be willing to maybe show us how to look to what's out there and, and, and see what's out there, maybe we can do something more to match it that way. So maybe she would be interested in talking to us as to what what she knows is available that we could match or. Yeah, I think maybe Brent, Brent and I can meet with her just to kind of feel her out in, in terms of ba based on our projects that we have. She may look at you and go, and that's no, too no, much, she, but, She's you know. very helpful. Our judge tomorrow. Looking about uh, public access, uh, do we have at the Parks and Recreation a Facebook and Instagram site? So we could, you guys, could basically monitor that bring news to the people, people could share, and suddenly we have 5,000 followers, and uh, everybody knows what's going on. It's the city's policy to have a central Facebook. We don't do Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and it's, it's centralized at the city level. A good reason for that is they have tens of thousands of followers. They've already have that public base to tap into, and we do all the time. We have a, a special place for the parks and recreation, another place for the water, and a place for highways or whatever. Not by, the, not, by the departments? Not separate on the social media. On the website, it's separate. Yeah, but that website is totally different. Is there an item you want to discuss at the next meeting? You're trying to get us. I, I, I'd like to because we we achieve so many by social media these days, especially in reaching out to people. That I think it's something we should discuss. See how we can use the city, uh, Facebook and and uh, Twitter uh, site to promote 
parks and recreation. Well, I, I talked about branding earlier, and I, I think we are at that stage now where we need to do something. If we want to raise funds for our projects, we need to, we need to start there. Well, I, I just I know right off the bat that they're very willing and eager and capable of doing that. We just need to target on what that is that we want them to get the word out on. Our board meetings, for one. Board meetings? How about that? Well, that, that, I mean, that's simple enough. I mean, I know it's on the web page and all that, but I, I get some of their Twitter feed on my phone, but I don't get anything saying, hey, guess, guess what? This is coming up. This committee is meeting. This advisory board is meeting. I don't. I know we're not the only advisory board to the city. They should be promoting that a little more, too, Bes just, besides just the council meetings, because they do a lot of that. Last time there was a CIP meeting uh, I, I attended, there, was about 10 pe there were about 10 people, and really they were very vocal about the cemetery <laughs> in the columbarium, that's all there was. Uh, I think we can cre recreate interest, and uh, there are some of our some of our work is really hidden in a bunch of pages. Uh, we just talk about prioritization of projects. Mm -hmm. Well, we have some different ideas here. What about ten thousand people having different ideas? Mm -hmm. That would be very powerful. Next time you need to bring more stuff on the agenda so we won't talk about these things and bring that to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Any, anything else? Uh, then we, uh, the next meeting is on February 28th. Oh, one more? I may have an item. It doesn't have to be the next meeting, but maybe March. But I'll try to put it on February for St. Angelo Gives. Uh, sure. To participate in that, we need a board recommendation. And I'm thinking about targeting a project. The next project after Brentwood is the refurbishment of the playground at Unidad Park. <clears throat> we have half the funding to do that. We need to match that. So that's an example of what we're that's, talking about. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And, uh, and that's, I think that's that the project the, I want to focus on. San Angelo Give is a, a great opportunity to put the parks uh, in front of all these people and tell them about the projects we need to fund that we only have half, half of the money for it, you know, help us. Mm -hmm. well, put it on the agenda, please. Yeah. Well, were were you going to give us more detail on the splash pad other than this? Other than you mentioned Location. that H E B is now. <laughs> well, I'll, to I'll, I'm meeting with them in February, so maybe I'll okay. have an update oh, either that. February. So you'll give or us an March. update on that. Then. Wonderful. Anything else, uh, Carl? There's a separate think? group working on a, another splash pad, so. Great. Super. What about Brent? Do you have anything, Brent? Last time you talked, you were frustrated because <laughs> something was not exactly right, so <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but. <laughs> we, we, we talked about all, all of that. We fine. There was a concerts. And I think there's some, some interesting thing that some of the concerts are organized by us and some bigger ones are organized by the, the city. You're talking about Riverfest? Right. Yeah. He's, he's working on Riverfest. I don't know if he wants to give an update. Could we have an meeting. update on Riverfest? Because... For the next meeting? Or next no? meeting. Yeah, absolutely. Great. For the now or for the next meeting? No, next meeting, can't, please. Can't be now. <laughs> I go with agendas. Okay. We got rules. It's almost yeah. five o'clock, so now we need to adjourn. <laughs> uh, do you have a motion to adjourn? Well, oh, the, the list of the everybody got the list of the next meetings. We got a the list for all the all, all this year. Everybody got that? Yeah, good. So, do you have a motion to adjourn? I move. Second. Second. We everybody say everybody uh, in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. We adjourn.